We're back. Time for another edition of the Carolina Insider. It's time for our weekend recap presented by Wells Fargo. I'm Jones Angel. That's Adam Lucas. There's a ton of Tar Heel stuff going on. Let's get to it. Adam, we'll start with baseball. Tar Heels were on the road this past weekend. They've been on the road a bunch, just finished up a long road trip that finished with a three game set in Atlanta against Georgia Tech. Due to the weather in the southeast this past weekend, they, they played those games actually early in the weekend. One game on Thursday, two games on Friday. Tar Heels took two of three. It was their first series win in Atlanta since 2017. Tar Heels played the entire series in less than 24 hours, <laughs> but that's fine if you win two out of three. Scott Forbes made some offensive adjustments. Casey Cook moves to the leadoff spot, which moves Vance Honeycutt down a little bit. He's hitting with guys on base now, and the Tar Heel offense responded got 18 Sorry, runs guys. in their two wins. One of those wins came in the first game when Max Carlson looked much more like Close the Max Carlson three. that you're used to in, in Carolina's game one ace through seven innings, only gave up five hits, one run, struck out eight and only walked two. So he was great. Another area of the game that's been consistently great for the Diamond Hills, the outfield defense, Mac Horvath showing off the cannon in right field in game one, and then Vance Honeycutt coming through again with two more great catches, one robbing a home run, one going backhanded into the fence in game three. Tar Heel outfielders continue to play great defense and they're going to need to in what has become a key stretch for Carolina baseball there at home against Queens on Tuesday and then a huge ACC series this weekend, Jones, the Thursday to Saturday set up against Miami in a series that's really important for the Coastal Division. Tar Heels now 22 and 10 overall. Their ACC record is odd because they had a couple games they were unable to play due to weather in Pittsburgh. So the Heels are eight and five in conference play. Second place in the Coastal Division. Virginia leads that division right now at 11 and four. Tar Heels ahead of Miami, who Adam just told you they will be hosting this weekend. The Hurricanes are eight and seven. Again, Carolina eight and five with a couple games that unfortunately they're not gonna have a chance to play due to weather against Pittsburgh. So big series coming up for the Heels in Chapel Hill. It's a busy weekend in Chapel Hill. Hope you can make uh, part of that week Weekend. Go and check out the Diamond Heels this weekend. All right, let's move to tennis. We'll start with the women. Still number one in the country, still undefeated. And Adam and I are going to talk to Brian Calbus, the head coach of Carolina's tennis program. Just got a chance to catch up with Coach Calbus a couple days ago. You'll see that interview tomorrow here uh, on all the Go Heels social channels through our video version of the Carolina Insider. And Adam, it was a great time to talk to Coach Calbus because his team continues to roll 26 and 0 overall, 12 and 0 in conference play that includes a couple of dominant wins over in-state opponents this past weekend. You play two really good ACC teams, NC State, which is in the top 10 in the country, and Wake Forest, and the Tar Heels don't drop a match. <laughs> beat the Wolfpack 7-0, beat Wake 4-0. Fiona Crawley goes 6-1, 6 love at number one singles against Wake, as the Tar Heels just continue to play really well and use that depth throughout their lineup. They'll have to do it again against maybe the second best team in the ACC, Duke, on Friday, that's the regular season finale at three o'clock. It's also senior day, so a big one. Uh, Duke comes in just a game out of first place in the ACC, so that one will decide if the Tar Heels can win the ACC outright. Meanwhile, on the men's side of things, Tar Heels ranked in the top 15 in the nation. Lost their latest action, though, against Duke. That dropped them to 15-7 and seven overall, 7-3 seven and three in the ACC. Currently, the Heels tied for fourth in conference play. ACC championships coming up soon, April 19th through the 23rd in Cary. Tar Heels do have a few more matches before then. They host Florida State and Miami coming up on Friday and Sunday of this weekend. Let's turn our attention to softball. Tar Heels swept the doubleheader against Pittsburgh on Sunday. Again, a series that was heavily affected by the weather this past weekend. Tar Heels won those two games on Sunday, 10-6 and 3-0. That improves them to 15-22 and overall, 6-8 and in conference play. And Adam got a couple of uh, really good pitching performances in there. From the same individual. <laughs> Lily Backus just goes out and throws 12 and a third innings in those two games. She got loose in game one, which the Tar Heels won 10 to six, then comes back in game two, just throws a complete game shutout, no problem. She had to get a little side work out, out of the way in game one, and then comes out and has a great performance. She threw over 200 pitches. Don't worry about the elbow, it's softball. You're throwing it underhand, you can throw as many pitches as you want, and Lily did that uh, against the Panthers. She was great. 
Abby Settlemeyer got it done at the plate. She was five for seven in those two games and drove in a couple runs. She's hitting 500 in ACC play. Tyrell's in position now where they've got a favorable schedule here over the next few weeks and have the chance to, to move up in the conference standings. The top 10 make the ACC tournament. Carolina currently sits eighth. Tariel still play Syracuse, which is right now 11th in the conference, then at NC State, who is 9th in the league, and at Georgia Tech, who is 10th in the league. So the Heels have played all those teams at the top of the ACC, and as Adam referenced, have a chance to improve that uh, record and resume a little bit as they play some teams uh, that are near the bottom of the conference right now. All right, let's look at lacrosse. The women, number three in the country, 10 and 2 overall, 6 and 1 in ACC play. Play. And we've mentioned the weather a couple times from this past weekend. It really affected women's lacrosse. They had to move their match to Finley North. I mean, look, at that's just a still shot. You get a good feel for how wet it was out there. The, the field at Doran Stadium uh, deemed to be unplayable because it was so wet that they moved to Finley North. And Tariels beat Pitt in the middle of that heavy rainstorm 16 to 3. And Adam, they uh, continue to play well and have a big match coming up against Syracuse here soon. Marissa White big in that monsoon as she scored six <laughs> goals. First time Otario got six since Jamie Ortega, as we know, a very good Tario women's lacrosse player, did it last April. Caitlin Wurstberger had six assists. That moves her into sixth all time in that category at Carolina. And the Tarios, as Joan said, Huge one coming up this weekend on that big weekend for Carolina sports. One of the biggest is in Chapel Hill. Women's lacrosse is against number one Syracuse Saturday at noon. Orange 7-0 and in the ACC, so the Tar Heels with a chance to play for a share of the ACC regular season title. On the men's side, Tar Heels 7 and 4, 1 and 2 in ACC action. Fell to Virginia 19 to 12. Again, on that, at that point, the field at Doran's uh, field was playable, but still very wet. And Adam and I had a chance to talk to Logan McGovern from Carolina's men's lacrosse team on the audio podcast this past week. He talked about his frustration of a slow start against Duke, who's a really good team uh, as well in men's lacrosse. And unfortunately, same thing happened against Virginia. Tar Heels were down 6 1 early in this game, lost the match 19 to 12 so things really settled in after that but the slow start hurt the Tar Heels in that one Carolina faces another ACC opponent Syracuse but it's in Olney Maryland they're going to meet in between there on Saturday let's finish up with swimming and diving big time congratulations to uh, our friend Aranza Vasquez we've had Aranza's joined us here on the video podcast she's also joined us on the audio podcast she was named the ACC women's diver of the year of course she was the national champion on both the one meter and three meter springboard diving events so congratulations to her and also Yadel Gambo for being named the Women's Diving Coach of the Year. In addition to Aranzez's success, five divers qualified for the NCAA championship. So congratulations to all of them. Thanks so much for being with us. A reminder again, Adam and I, video-wise, will be with Brian Calbus tomorrow. Have the social drive coming up on Thursday as well. Thanks for being here on the Carolina Insider.